and gathering some stuff together and I'm going to build a bird table and the idea is that you can do the same as me, you can design it like I showed you in the design sheet and then you two can build a bird table. So, right I'm also going to try and stand up more straight because clearly that needs to happen. Anyway, I went to Houghton Hall Park yesterday and found myself a stick. It's kind of what I was looking for. So I'm going to cut it, cut it, and then that'll be that length. I'm going to put it in my vise. If you haven't got a vise, you may need to use a friendly brother or sister to sit on top of it when you cut it on a kitchen table. <laughs> right, now, clearly this, guys, is if you can, you will, and if you can't, you literally don't. Um, so I'm going to saw that. I'm going to use, I've got a few saws available. My coping saw. That's probably not going to do the job at the moment. I've got quite a thick trunk. And we've got a tenon saw. So. Remember, you're going to be doing this 
under adult supervision, please. Don't be, <laughs> don't be in your garage on your own with an electric sander. Um, you know, get one of those adults that's around to help you. Anyway, look, happy with that. I'm gonna crack on now and cut the other end. I don't want it too tall, like seriously. So I'm kind of aiming to cut across there so that it measures up with that one. I'm not gonna lie, this is a lot harder than I than I thought it would be to cut. Right, so that's more like what we're going to do. I've got my tray, I've got my tray here. So the plan is that's going to fit on top of that like that. All right, and then I can, because I've got this handy little offshoot, I thought I could actually hang the nuts off there um, or the bacon because they like bacon rind. So yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay. So I've got my tray to go on the top. Got my log. But then I wanted to build a cross piece. So I've got these, they just they're, I don't know, part of a, oh no, they're part of an old wardrobe that we saved. But obviously, if I was in the workshop, I would saw and I'd do a, um, a cross half joint. I can't do that here because I don't have a chisel um, that, because, you know, I didn't really plan that so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to screw those two together I'm going to cut bits of wood basically that will, I will then glue here right so that I've actually evened it up and here right so I'm gonna go and cut some wood and I'll see you in a minute I have the wood to size, cut all the wood to size, cut these little feet that are going to go on this one, ready. I have also drilled a hole, which I decided to do that off camera, because you need to be getting a parent to do that, because you're under 18. So you ask someone to drill you a hole, if this is your design, remember this is my design, I've designed it knowing my skills on what I've got in the house. When you design your bird table, you design it based on your skills and what you've got in your house. So we're now going to stick it all together in a minute. Right, I'm going to use PVA. The advantage of PVA is it, once it dries, it's really, really strong. Uh, 
But the disadvantage is this is going to take time to dry. Not on your video because I shall cut and edit but the next time you see these pieces of wood they will have been drying for 24 hours and they will be together. Now I am using lots of glue because that is what is needed. Alright, you don't don't skimp on the glue. PVA dries clear, but by having a nice by having a nice I'm just working out which way they are and that's going probably that way. I've got an odd hole in this I don't really like, but yeah, it's like six or one and a half a dozen or the other. So, I'm also going to nail this in place. Alright, so I'll put them on there. Right, nails on their own will not work. Glue on its own will not work. But glue and nails. Right. Or in the case of the one with the hole in it, glue and a screw. So, 
This can go back down. I've got this a bit. I'm going to need a couple of holes in that. I'm not going to be able to drill it because it's metal. And so even with my electric drill, I'm not going to be drilling metal. That would be a silly idea. Right? So I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a hole in it by literally whacking it with a hammer. When you hit it with a obviously a pointy nail, that is going to create a spike when it comes to the other side. I need the spike to be going downwards. So I'm hitting this, but not all the way through. So that I've got this very thick tray. a drill when you can hit a screw with a hammer. Right, so I've now got two little holes. Just going to give that a bit more actually. Right there. Right, that is going to screw onto here. Right, again. I'm going to stop there because just like the foot needs weatherproofing, this also needs painting. It's rusty, it's an old tray, needs painting, it's going to be painted in the same colour as the feet. And so I'm going to be painting that and then we'll put it all together when it's all ready tomorrow. Though for you that'll be in a matter of seconds. Right, hi. So... They are purple, and um, this is because it turned out that was the only paint I had. So we're making academy colours. So we're just ready now to screw it and glue it all together. We just need right. I've already screwed these through these three in, so that they're ready. Uh, I'm just going to do the centre one. A little bit further right, so I'll be able to place it onto these I've actually drilled some lead holes in the top here so it can go straight through uh, we're using the glue and the screws because again it just it reinforces it right um, the glue on its own won't be enough the screws on their own won't be enough but together they work well together so, no, not one in that middle hole. Just like that a little bit. I'm going to get the others out. Let's find the holes. Okay, ready to turn it. tray I have screwed the little screws in already uh, we're not using PVA at this point because although that's really good on the wood not good for the metal tray uh, so we're actually going to use epoxy resin which is two glues that you mix together a hardener 
and the actual adhesive. Ah, oh, now I've lost my stick. There it is. <gasps> Covered in the other glue. Mm. Right, so, mix the two parts in even measure. So, it's not science though, you don't have to measure it out with scales. You have to do a squirt. and a squirt of the glue. We're making quite a lot of it because we need it to do that in the same amount of each, roughly. It goes in there and mix those two together. Mix, mix, mix. Literally just spread it again, lots. Because I need this soaking into the wood, soaking into the tray, joining the two together. All right. This is a form of plastic. It's a firm, just in case you're interested. It's a <laughs> of course you're interested. It's the thermosetting plastic, which means that once this has dried, it cannot be reformed like acrylic, you know how acrylic, once that's dry and hard, you can heat it again and bend it back into shape. Not with epoxy resin, it's a thermoset. So once that's dried, that is gonna stay as the plastic. So I'm lining up the holes. Not so easy now that I've got the glue in place. Thanks glue. Them. I'm actually really pleased with this, hopefully. <laughs> but um, when you design something yourself, you have to look like I had this idea in my head and I've put these things together and I really am quite pleased with it. Uh, what I'm going to do next, now that I've screwed those down as far as they will go, what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to varnish the trunk because although that's a trunk that's used to be an outside, I'm going to add a coating of weatherproof and I'm going to spray the top of this again because obviously now I have the screws showing and so I will do that and then I'll show you the finished product in my garden later. Thank you.